Welcome to Larry's Library. This week I finally got my hands on uh, the collection of DC's Justice League vs. Godzilla vs. Kong. The hardcover. This one is 264 pages. The MSRP on it is $29.99. Now here's where I would normally tell you not to be a chump and pay that, but unfortunately, at least at the time of shooting this video, it is out of stock at InStockTrades.com, my preferred vendor. Now, CheapGraphicNovels.com shows it as special order only at a price of, let's see, um, $17.99. So, if you want a special order, it takes them a week or two to get that in, you can get it there at a great discount. Of course, by that time, IST may have more stock. Not sure about that. Now, Amazon does have it in stock if you want to roll the dice with Amazon's terrible shipping. Uh, they have it, uh, it's not discounted very much. It's at, when I looked it up a while ago, it was $24.04. So you can save an entire $5 if you buy it from Amazon. And maybe it will get there in a giant box with no packing material with all four corners blunted. If you're unlucky like I am sometimes. <laughs> so there you go. Now, this would be a great deal, except it's standard sized standard size hardcover. You got a book about the great titans of cinema, Kong and Godzilla and all the other kaiju. And what do you do? You put it in a standard size hardcover. DC, what the hell is wrong with you? You had this great opportunity and you blew it. <laughs> okay, you totally blew it. Just crazy. Now I do about this thing when they were coming out in singles uh, last year. And there was a special edition of one of the issues, I guess it was issue one, I don't recall, but where it had a sound chip in there of Godzilla's roar. And then there was another one with a sound chip of Kong's roar. You would think they would have put those chips in this hardcover, right? Yeah, you'd be wrong if you thought that because they're not in here. Another fail on DC's part, <laughs> okay? What the hell, DC? What are you thinking? Now that I've said all the things I don't like about it, let me tell you some good stuff. The binding quality, like all the DC hardcovers that I own, it's excellent. Okay, yes, it's standard size, you know, but it is very good quality. Uh, in fact, it has a dust jacket. You remove the dust jacket, and underneath there you have more art, different artwork, beautiful artwork, and it's uh, just baked right onto the book with a nice glossy finish. So, why did you even put a dust jacket on here? But I can't really bitch about that too much because you take the dust jacket off and you've got a nice baked on glossy finished book. So, at least that's good. And the paper is the stock I prefer. It's very pulpy. It's a matte finish. It's not glossy at all. I liked it. Now, it's not heavy. It's not a heavy stock. So, you got to be careful. You know, you can't tear it pretty easily. You know, if you're some kind of savage when you read your books, you might tear it. But otherwise, uh, I really like the matte finish on these pages. Nice. I wish all books had a nice matte finish, but that's just me. So, the credits on this book are two people I was not familiar with. The writing is by Brian, uh, let's see here, Bucciolato, I believe is the pronunciation. No problems with that script. It was fun. And uh, he writes all seven issues. And the art, I was also not familiar with this, with this guy. This is by Christian Duche. And he pencils all of this, and he inks most of it. Now, there are a couple issues that Tom Dyrnick comes in and inks. But he does almost all of it. Every issue he pencils, and he inks a good portion of it. Christian Duche. Was not familiar with his work before. And I gotta tell you, fantastic artwork. Uh, if you're familiar with him and you want to point me to some other books he's done, uh, let me know in the comments. If it's not all DC superheroes, <laughs> I might check it out because I really love the artwork in this. Spectacular. So what this collects is the entire limited series that began last year, I believe, 2023, uh, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. This ran seven issues. Actually, if you count the special, the, um, let's see, what was it called? Monster-sized edition, which is also included in here. So you got 
7.5 8 issues, however you want to look at that. And that's the entire saga. Now, remember, I'm not a DC guy, so this is a review coming from uh, someone who is not a big DC fan, not a, not a fan of most DC superheroes. In fact, uh, I mean, I do like Batman, of course. Who doesn't like Batman, right? I enjoy Batman, do not enjoy Superman. And in fact, I, uh, when I heard about this, my first thought was, oh man, I hope Godzilla roasts Superman's ass, <laughs> and I hope King Kong stomps him, you know. That was my big hope, that he'd get his ass kicked by the two of my favorite monsters of all time, Kong and Godzilla. Well, without too many spoilers, I'll tell you this, Godzilla does kick his ass. In fact, he nearly kills him. Okay, I, I, won't, give any, I won't give away any more than that. Now, I can only assume that this story is a what-if style story, and it surely can't be in continuity because a fairly major character does die in this. I won't reveal who it is because I don't want to spoil the thing too much, giving away too many plot points. But yeah, so basically what happens here is Lex Luthor and the Legion of Doom, they break into Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Somehow, <laughs> they get in there. They have a plan to steal a couple of items. But Toy Man is with them. And this character has his own designs and he goes against, um, he doesn't follow the plan and he wanders off and he finds the Dreamstone. Now, I was not familiar with the Dreamstone before reading this, but uh, you, you, you uh, DC superhero uh, people, you probably knew of that artifact. I think it's uh, an artifact that's been around the DC universe for a while. I just wasn't familiar with it as a Marvel guy. But anyway, this Dreamstone, apparently you can wish things into existence. It seems like it's uh, maybe similar to Marvel's uh, Cosmic Cube. That's the kind of vibes I got reading this as, a, as an outsider to the DC universe. It reminded me of the Cosmic Cube. But he, anyway, he gets this thing, and he basically wishes Godzilla and Kong and all of the other, well, I don't say all, but a lot of other kaiju, a lot of other large monsters from Skull Island and the uh, legendary films universe of monsters, you know, brought them into the DC universe proper. I'm not sure he had much of a plan after that because it's not like he could control them. So yeah, things go awry, and these monsters are all over the DC Universe, and it is wild seeing the DC stable of superheroes grappling with these giant monsters, and I'm not even going to go into what they do, because there are some very fun plot points that happen here uh, involving some mechs, I'll just say that. I'm not going to say what they are. If you've seen some artwork from this that shows it, then you, can't, you probably already got spoiled to some of those plot points, but... I'm going to try to stay away from those as much as I can when I scan the artwork. There may be a couple little spoilers in the art that I show, but I'm going to try to stay away from them as much as I can, which is going to be difficult with this book because the whole second half of the book involves those mechs, which I'm not going to reveal here. Yeah, for, for me, the star of this book is the fantastic art, number one, and then Godzilla and Kong, number two and three, and then the stable of DC heroes and villains. But uh, yeah, overall it was a big, fun, goofy mess is the best way I can describe it. And I really enjoyed it. I, um, I, I still can't help but think how much better this would have been in a giant size format. I mean, you, <laughs> you got a book dealing with these giant monsters. You got this licensing agreement that is not gonna be around forever and you don't put it in a large format book I mean, talk about a lost opportunity. But hey, maybe this is their maybe this is DC's fiendish plan. Maybe they know people like me are gonna buy this because I'm dying to see what happens. And then I'm gonna buy it again later when they release an absolute or something. <laughs> because, you know, I would. For the artwork here, I would. I mean the story is nothing um it's not earth shattering, you know what I mean? This is not um something revolutionary in, in the comics field. But it is big, goofy fun, like I said. It's a big sprawling goofy mess of a story <laughs> but it is really fun i enjoyed the hell out of this and i think you will too if you're a godzilla fan a king kong fan or and or a fan of the dc universe of superheroes yeah you're gonna have fun with this and like i said i, I really love the fact that the artwork turned out to be as great as it was and i'm introduced to a new creator that i did not know of before christian duche 
art is fantastic. Take a look at it. I mean, I've been showing it, and yeah, this guy is good, and this was a very fun ride, and I'm glad I bought it. Like I said, I will, I'll rebuy it if they put it out in a bigger format. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm a glutton for punishment in that, and I will do it. But anyway, overall, this is a 7 out of 10 for me. I think the art was better than the script, but yeah, it was still fun. Pick it up if you can, if you can still find it. And thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this, and I will catch you next time.